I don't care about what's happening in my family, with my daughters, my sons, with my wife, my marriage. I don't care what's happening in the body. I don't care what's going on. I'm not a quitter. I'm not just going to give up. I'm not just going to stop coming to church because things are happening. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say, well, my mother is sick and I don't know if she's going to make it. She's in God's hands. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not letting go. I'm not going to stop, people of God. I'm not a quitter. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I might get hungry. All I've got is to eat is the PJ sandwich. If I've got to eat peanut butter and jelly, that's what it is. If i got to just put some scrambled eggs, and that's all we got, that's all we got. But I'm not a quitter. I'm not going to moan and crow and be mad because I don't have this and have that. See, in the kingdom, you're going to find some hard things. And you're going to hear some hard things. This is why when you're married and things are going on, you might hear your pastor say, listen, forgive him. Forgive her. Reconcile. You say, Pastor, you don't understand what he, what he did. You don't understand. See, there are some hard things that you will go through. Hard sayings. Hard things. But we're so sensitive. Actually, why are you so sensitive? Ask them again. They're not listening. Ask her. Touch her. Touch her right now and say, why are you so sensitive? Why are you so sensitive? Why are you so sensitive? Just so easily get miscombobulated. Just sensitive. I gotta get out of here. What I've learned is that when you're going through hard things, I've learned, Brother Oscar, when I'm going through hard things, there might be times I do need a vacation. Nothing wrong with a vacation. Though. There's nothing wrong with a vacation. Now, you just can't be taking vacation all the time. Somebody would like to take vacations every weekend. That's I won't be here on Wednesday. I'm not going to be here on Sunday either because we, we're doing another flight. We're doing another cruise. We're doing another. We're going up the mountain over in. Stop on. We're still building the church. Put some of that money in the offering. Amen. But it's okay to go on a vacation, brothers and sisters. Because the vacation, you kind of get away. And you can kind of be refreshed. See, but if you're going on vacations and you're doing all of this stuff, you really didn't vacate. You, you were working and doing stuff there. And now when you come back, you said, I'm tired. I need another one. Because you didn't get yourself refreshed. So if I go on a vacation, I ain't doing nothing. That's it, sister. Eat, sleep. And even if we go see things, I want to walk real slow. I don't want to feel pressure. I don't want nobody like you got to do this. No, no, that ain't the vacation I want. I want to just take it and kick rocks. Vacation. Because we do go through some hard things, but I'm not going through hard things. I'm not going through some hard things and then giving up. And so I need to be encouraged, read the word of God, pray. And so these few secular points that I, I read that could help us by teaching us that life will have its hard times. These teachings will help me that when I'm facing difficulties or being challenged to do better, that I might have to exert more energy and push myself to do more. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to give up. I can't let anything stop the goal that I'm trying to reach and that is to be saved. And this is my plight to the Belglade area and to the saints of Belglade here in New Life. I want to talk to you from the heart 
in Belgrade, the spirit, one of the spirits here in Belgrade is a spirit of giving up. Yes. Or the yes. spirit of I don't care. Yes. Yes. The spirit of like nonchalant. Yes. I don't care no more. Yeah. I don't care. You can tell that. And I'm going to say some things and I, I, I hope you are not sensitive or you get offended. What I'm saying is this, you can tell that we don't care. You can tell the spirit, so notice I didn't say an individual, but the spirit says, I don't care. I don't care. One thing in Belgrade, what you will see in Belgrade is trash thrown out on the ground. Trash. Just, you will see that we don't care about our property. You will see the new buildings that are just built are now will start looking raggedy after a while. You will see that when something is built that's nice, we don't take care of it. Why? Because we don't care. You will see cars, cars that are in the grass, cars in the grass and just sitting there that needs to be repaired, one wheel off, the other one uh, hanging off and it's just sitting in the in the middle of the grass and cars and people washing their their car on the grass uh, Don't be sensitive You will see you will see You will see in front of people's houses. They might have some cheers outside of the house and just maybe dining room cheers, but it ain't just just regular just different cheers outside just sitting there and maybe somebody have a cigarette ashtray and it's there for tomorrow because we're going to sit out here tomorrow. But if you ever go to a nicer neighborhood, see when I went off to college, one of the things that I saw, I thought it was, I, I, I tripped out about this because I'm, I'm from Gary, Indiana. I've talked about that place before. But when I went off to school, the university, Ball State University, one of the things that kind of tripped me out, when I started seeing them take, uh, they beautify the lawns. And they were taking the, the, the flowers that, that were still blooming. They would come and take all those flowers out and put new ones in there. And I'm sitting here like, what you doing all that for? Because they care about the outlook of the school. They care about the grass. Today here in Belgrade, you can just see somebody just walking to back to your backyard. Because they don't care. You see how people come out of the house. Hair undone. I call them bags. My wife call them um, bonnets. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes. You will see that we don't care and our, our whole uh, demeanor is nonchalant because everybody's walking around with slides on. I call them flip-flops house shoes. You will see that because we don't care. You'll see us just Walk around in the neighborhood. Don't get me wrong, it's hot. But you'll see brothers just walk around with shorts on and no shirt on. Because we don't care. And if you say something, watch my answer is, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care, so what? I don't care. I don't care. You will see many cars that are basically, basically damaged or, 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 or beat up and they will not go hear me i understand you say well it costs money uh but beat up really really bad and just just kind of like just thrown off to the side and marked all up and not care about their vehicle so not reporting to get the insurance to fix it it's just i don't care that did been on there for like years i don't care I don't care if that back window been broken for a long time. I don't care. 
I'm saying to you, that's the mindset we have. The spirit here is, it's, it's, it's trying to keep the people on this low step. So then when somebody comes and say, no, we are better than that. No, we're not going to be like that. No, we're not going to act like that. No, we're not going to have our posture is not going to be like that. No, our mindset is not going to be like that. No, young lady, you're not going to be like that. No, my brother, we're not going to be like that. No, when you hear me say to all of the brothers, when you come to church, have on a shirt and a tie because this is not the norm. You hear what I'm saying? When you hear me say, sister, you need to look like this and that, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to control you, but I'm telling you the normalcy that's in here, it's a spirit and so now I'm going to push what God wants and how God wants it to be I'm going to push God's will, God's way I'm going to push holiness I'm going to push a standard that you may not be used to and when it comes to you you're going to feel like there's too much pressure, I'm telling you we got the mindset of small church we got the mindset of small things and when I'm trying to push you to look at something bigger on the grander scale pastor we ain't used to that and, and you trying to make me do some things that I ain't comfortable about doing and, and, and that's too hard for me and I feel like I just want to just give up and I'm just going to sit in the background because too much is going on and I can't handle this. Too much, that's what it is. I'm trying to change the culture. So when I tell the young ladies, listen, no, you don't need to be like that. It's kind of like Oh, I feel it. But what I'm trying to tell you, this is not the normal. See? This is not the normal. So this is why we try to take some of the saints and different young people to other places so that you can see that when you see it, you'll be like, whoa. Whoa, I didn't know. I didn't know. It's like when you go somewhere and you, and you kind of be in certain places, you know that you, you can't go over there loud. This is why I thank God. I think Sister Minister Porter and I think uh, I think it was you, sir, that took the kids, the young people, to a dinner where they had to dress up and eat, and the young ladies had to wear nice dresses, and the young men had to wear their shirt and ties or look nice when they went out because some people are not used to that. So that when they sit down, they know how to order their food and they know how to talk, and they would say, "Yes, can I have some water, please?" and and, and, and know how to talk or articulate the words that they're saying. So when you hear that or when you see us do that, it's like, y'all too much. You're doing too much, Pastor. You need to kind of calm down. But I'm pushing. We're pushing because we're changing the mindset and the culture. This is why you young men, you might say, well, Pastor, you be pushing this, and we young. But I'm trying to push you, because why? You are in Glade Central, you're at Pahokee, you, you, you go to these schools, and if I can push you, watch this, then we can push God's gender in that church. And so you're the vessel that's there, so I'm pushing you while God is pushing me. But when I'm pushing you, you're like, stop pushing, Pastor. I'm pushing. This is not how they like it, Pastor. I have to get in the mindset that I don't care about how they like it. I don't care about how things were here. There's a different agenda that God has going on here in the day there. This is why it's hard to kind of understand when we talk about order. Because if everything was just so out of order and confusion, then when order comes, people sit there and say, what is this? It's called order. It's called structure. It's called the way. It's what God wants. It's his way. If you hear what I'm saying. And so brothers and sisters, I, I, I'm going to bring it to the end. I want you to see Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Maybe should have made make it a series. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. When I feel like. I'm ready to give up and throw in the towel. I need to think about this scripture. I'm looking unto Jesus. Who is he? The author and the finisher of my faith. 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Notice what he did. He endured. So brothers and sisters, you and I need to endure. To my Creole speaking brothers and sisters, I need you to endure. To the Spanish speaking, I need you to endure. Meaning you're going to go through things that you're going to feel like it's heavy. But I need you to endure. The Bible says endure. What did he do? He endured. He endured. The Bible says, for who the joy was set before him endured the cross. What else did he do? Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That right hand is the authority of God. Not that he's literally on the right hand side. He's in authority. Because you can't get authority unless you've gone through something to get authority. And so God is telling me, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, being confident of this very thing that he which he hath begun, watch, a good work. God, I don't know about y'all, but he started a good work in me. Amen. Like when he started in me, I was like, God, finish what you started. Finish what you have you started. Finish it. And I'm still saying that today. God, you what you started in me, so the man of God that planted it on my heart, that taught me the word of God, I'm grateful for my mother. Whatever you started in me, finish it. Because I don't just give up. Yet. I don't just give up like that. I need God to finish it. Finish what you started in me. Being confident of this very thing. Notice being confident. I'm not arrogant. I'm just confident. That he which had begun a good work in you. You were performing until the day. Of Jesus Christ. I'm just going to be able to go over this one. One saying. You know, God, I'm saying to you, as Paul said to the church of Galatians, that let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap. If we do what? If you don't give up. If you don't faint. So here it is. And let me just do one point. The hardest thing in the kingdom of God, watch this, is change. The hardest thing in the kingdom of God, you're going to face some hard things. And one of those things is change. Why? Because people don't like change. We don't like change. Yes, yes. Or we like the change that we want. Right. But sometimes the changes that we want ain't a complete change. Amen. Does that make sense? Right. If I told you, watch this, that we're about to renovate the church, and all of a sudden you come in here and you saw, watch this, just blinds on the windows. How many would think that we renovated the church? We didn't do that at all. So this is the same thing that's in the Glade area. When they sit there and say they're taking up a building fund and you come in there, all they didn't did was change the blinds. Maybe put some paint on it. Or paint it outside of the church. That looks horrible as well. But there is not a complete change, overhaul. And we don't like that. And so, in, in the kingdom, there's some hard things that the kingdom gives to us and that's about change. Becoming a child of God, we have to adapt to change. Change in the way that we think. There got to be the change in the way that we function. There's going to be a change in the way that you once believed. There's going to be a change. When I say once believed, meaning sometimes our belief is, is not where it should be because we haven't allowed the word of God to get into us to change us. So we believe a certain way because the word, we're pushing back on the word, we're pushing back on the Holy Ghost, and we don't want to change. But I'm saying once you get into the kingdom and you start learning, there's going to be some hard things that you're going to learn and hear in the kingdom. Change will happen to the way we operate. So again, watch this. Notice a few hard things from the scripture when we hear it. Notice this. Matthew chapter 16 verse 25. Watch this. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake will find it. That is, life will be for all eternity. Verse 26, for what, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and watch this lose his soul or forfeit his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? See, this is hard for us to, to take in because the scripture in verse 25 says, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. That doesn't make sense to me in the natural. That if I save my life, I'm going to lose it. 
So it's a hard saying or a hard thing when you get into the kingdom when somebody tells you, give up your life. That's hard for me to do. That's hard for us to do. Give up your life. That's hard for us to do, Brother Brian. If I told you, deny yourself, deny what you want, deny it. That very thing you want, deny it. That's hard to do. So there's a lot of things that are hard for us in the kingdom. But just because it's hard doesn't mean that I need to throw in the towel. Just because it's hard doesn't mean, mother, that I just need to say, you know what? I can't handle this. I can't, I can't deal with this. I'm, I'm going to just go. I'm gonna, I just, we just can't handle this. You don't need to just give up still. So it's hard to do these things. I read it in Matthew 18 and 3, 4. Just only a couple of scriptures. Jesus said some hard words in Matthew 18, verse 3 to 4. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become a little child. Who you calling a little child? That's hard. You telling me I got to be like a child? I'm a grown man. I'm grown. And now you telling me I got to be like a child. That's hard. Nobody wants to do that. I got to be like a child. And how does a child, a child got to be told what to do. Now who up in here that's over a certain age of 30 want to be told what to do? Not even our young people want to be told what to do. But now you telling me in the kingdom, I got to be like a child? That's hard for me. That's a hard saying, you That's hard for me to do. But just because it's hard, people of God, don't mean that I just need to give up and walk away from it. I got to ask God, God, give me the grace. Give me the help yes. so that I can be as a child. Yes. That's right. Put me where I need to be. The Bible says, really, I say unto you, except you be converted and become as a little children. Notice you shall not enter into the kingdom. In the kingdom of God. Here's the other verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble. Ooh, that's hard. In the kingdom, that's a hard saying. That's hard stuff right there. Be humble. There's another scripture that says, watch this. Turn the other cheek. Turn the cheek. Whose cheek? Your cheek, not my cheek. You're telling me to turn the other cheek? It's, 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 God ain't talking about just let somebody smack you, but what he's saying is, listen, if they do do that, give them the other one. That's hard. That's hard when he tells me, pray for your enemies. I'm loving those who despise me. That's hard. But there are going to be some hard things you're going to face in life and in the kingdom. But that don't mean I need to give up. That don't mean you need to throw in the towel. That don't mean that you sit there and say, I can't be saved no more because these things he's telling me to do is too hard. And many people will say, I can't do that. Why? I gotta, I gotta I can't be, I can't be saved. I can't be holy. I gotta change the way I dress. I gotta change the way I look. I gotta change the way I act. I understand that it might be hard, but if you want to be saved, that's the big goal. If I want to be saved, then God, you're gonna have to help me. If I want everybody in the glade area to be saved, God don't have to work on me. Because I can't do this by myself. Right. God has given you an anointing, Sister Jack. And he's laid something in your life and on your heart. And you're the one that he has chosen. He has to get you to where you need to be. To be more effective. He has to put you. This is why you will see me get on the leaders and I say, I want to meet with you. I want to meet with you. Why? Because I'm going to push you. Why are you pushing on me? Because God wanted to use you. And the only way he's going to be able to use you, you got to be here. So I'll say to you, can you find a way to get here? Or I'll say to you, now sister or brother, we got to do this. And what I'm going to do is I'll be meeting with you. And the things that I see, you think that I'm nitpicking. But no, I'm trying to get you to the place that he's laying on my heart to get you so you can be more effective. Because so many people like the titles in this city. Bishop. Apostle, yes. prophet, yes. minister, yes. evangelist. Yes. They like all of these different titles. Do, 
But I've learned I don't need to be into the title. I need to let the ministry speak for itself. Does that make sense what I'm saying? And this is what people of God, I look when I sing, I think that the scripture, Paul said this thing. Paul said this in Romans 13, 11, for I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify, watch mine office. Notice, is it Romans 13, 11, and that knowing that time, go to uh, chapter 11, Romans chapter 11, verse 13, maybe there. Pull that up for me, please. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, notice what he says, I magnify my office, not my title. I magnify the ministry, not my title. Oh, that's good. That's good. So I'm not putting this big thing on my title, I'm an apostle. That's right. No, Paul says I'm magnifying the ministry. Yes. That's what I want you to see. The ministry, we're going to blow that up. Yes. But the title ain't got nothing to do with that. Because if I'm not doing what the, what the ministry tells me to do, then my title means nothing. Amen. And so people of God, in the kingdom, there's going to be some hard things. And I'll show you this and I'm done. I want you to show you a prophet in the scripture. This may seem kind of harsh, but Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 11. See, in the kingdom, I've learned that there will be some hard things or some things that God would ask me to do. And I don't think he will ever ask me to do this, but I just want you to see it. Because when people come to me, and then sometimes you hear people sit there and say they're a prophet. I say, you're an Old Testament prophet or a New Testament prophet? People say, I'm a prophet. Are you an Old Testament prophet or a New Testament prophet? Because many people like to be called or act like they're the Old Testament prophets and call down fire from heaven. They like that type of prophet. Prophesying over you. Thus said the Lord. So if you're going to be that prophet, I say, okay, be careful because the Old Testament prophets have to do some things that you and I would be like, that's hard. I can't do that, God. The book says, then watch this, Ezekiel, the prophet, and God is using him as a vessel, as a minister to the people of Israel. And he tells them to do this. Then measure out a jar of water for each day. And drink it at set times. Prepare and eat this food as you would barley cakes. Eat what food? While all the people are watching, bake it over a fire using dry human dung. As you fuel and then eat the bread. And the Lord said, this is how Israel will eat the foul bread in the Gentiles' land to which I will banish them. Basically, what God is telling this prophet to do, cook the dung of humans and eat it. Now, you and I would be like, I'm out. I'm out, God. I'm out. If I got to be saved to do that, I'm out. What I'm saying is God wouldn't do this today. But I'm saying there are some hard things that are out there. That when you hear it or when you go through it, we're, we're, we want to just give up and be like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. But I'm looking at that video that we looked at. These Chinese people that go through what they go through. And here we are in America sitting in the AC. Sitting on cushy chairs. Lights are on and all of that. You got carpet. You got bathrooms. Anyone you choose that you want to go to. You touch it, it flushes. Do you hear what I'm saying? At the same time, we're complaining. This is too hard. I'm not making enough money. I don't like what I'm going through. She or he's getting on my nerves. And I'm tired of this thing. It's hard. I'm not trying to downgrade your reality. But I'm saying there's somebody greater. Greater who we can call on to say, God, you see me. Yes. And whatever I'm going through, I'm asking you, help me through this. Help me through this because you're building up my character. Yes. You're helping me through this because there's something that you have for me to do. 
I'm going to be able to affect other people's lives greater than what I'm doing right now. How many know when God, and I'm done here, when God wants to use you, how many know that God will prune you? Anybody know what pruning is? If you don't know what pruning is, those who are farmers and those who plant and those who do that, they know what I'm talking about. When he prunes you, when you prune something, what you're doing is, watch this, if you have a plant and you see certain things growing on that plant, pruning is when you start cutting it off. Cutting things. Cutting. You might be saying, but I, but I got fruit. Why are you cutting my branches? Why are you cutting me? Because God has said, I want you to bear more fruit. So in certain parts of your life, things will go smooth and all of a sudden, You'll get a halt and a stop. Why are you stopping, God? I mean, we was on a road where everything was happening. I was feeling blessed. And then all of a sudden you stop. What is God about to do? Prune you. I'm about to cut some things off. I'm about to make you go through some things. I'm about to make you go through some things. Watch this, because it's going to start making you grow even more. Watch this. Your prayer life is going to take off now. Do you hear me? You're going to be more faithful coming to church now. I'm about to prove you. Watch this. You're going to get a testimony and you're going to get a revelation of who God is and how he's able to keep you when you're going through. That when you open up your mouth, you're not going to just be talking, but you're going to be talking in the Holy Ghost because you've gone through it. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So God will do these things to you and I, brothers, sisters, to prune you to bring out more fruit. So when you think that it's hard what you're going through, you're struggling with what you're going through. If you're dealing with these things that you're going through, in your mind, in your relationship, in your marriage, on your job, in your finances, in your health, the people of God is going to take you to where you just would, ourselves would not want to go or we wouldn't get there ourselves. But God, when you take me through it, then I'll get there. And when I get there, you're going to get the glory. When I get to where you want me to be, you're going to get the glory. Because I'm going to realize I did not get myself here by myself. I serve a God that's a sovereign God. Yes, I have to go through some tears. Yes, I've been betrayed. Yes, I've been rejected. Yes, I've been let down. Yes, I didn't have all the money. Yes, I had to deal with this. Yes, I had to pray for my wife. Yes, I had to do this with my children. Yes, I couldn't do what I wanted to do, but yes, God, look at where I am today. Look how many people are getting the word of God. Look at how many of I've affected already being in the great area. Look at where the church is. There's no goodness of my own. God is doing this. And so I'm saying to you, there's some hard things in the kingdom of God. But don't give up. If you're here tonight, just stand with me. We go home. I can't finish this. I can't finish this. There's some hard things in the kingdom. And that scripture text that we read, as you're standing, the Bible says to us that Jesus is talking to his disciples. If you look in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, and maybe in verse 17, Luke 10 and 1 and verse 17 as well, the Bible says it was 70 disciples, 70 of them. 70 disciples. But when you get to the book in the Gospel of John, Jesus is talking to these disciples and he gives a word. And the word is, take, eat my body. Drink my blood. They hear something that's hard. But they were excited because what were they doing before that? The master, master, master. We were, we, were, we were laying hands and demons was coming out and we were doing this master, master. Now that you get to a point, and I'm going to give you a revelation of who he is, they say this is hard. And the Bible says that they all walked away except the twelve. All the disciples walked away and they walked no more with Jesus. And when they turned, he said, I turned around to the disciples and he asked them, Are y'all leaving too? Yes. Is this too hard for y'all too? Jesus. It was Peter that said, watch this, where we gonna go? Jesus. <laughs> Stuff has always been hard. Jesus. 
Where am I going to go? If I'm having problems in my marriage, if I'm having problems at home, if I'm dealing with things with my daughter, dealing with things with my son, dealing with finances, dealing with this and dealing with that, but where am I going to go? You got the you got the words to eternal life, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So I, this job ain't gonna keep me. This money ain't gonna hold me. I can work all these hours, and I'm gonna need some more money. So what is able to hold me in between? I need Jesus. If you're here tonight, and things have been hard for you. Things have been a struggle for you. I want you to come. Yes, yes, yes. And as the scriptures say, Lord, your grace is sufficient. Yes, yes. It's been hard for me, Lord. But I'm not giving up. Your grace is sufficient. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. Your grace is sufficient. How about we all just do this? We're going home in it. Just let's all come to the altar. Everybody in here, let's just come. Yes. Let's just come. We're going to ask God to strengthen us as, yes. as a church. You're dealing with finances. You, you don't know how you're going to do this. And I know the economy and things are raising up. And God, we don't, we don't, we don't know, but I do know that you do. You know, you know how you're going to take care of this. I found out when I don't know what else to do. Let me just start worshiping and praising you. When I don't have answers, then I'm just going to start praising you. So can we just open up our mouth? Lord, we're not going to ask you for anything. We're just going to show you and tell you that we're grateful. And I know that, God, you will solve all of our problems. And I know that all of these things will work together for me. I know that you're going to turn it around. So why fret? Why be doubtful? Why let the enemy begin to confuse my mind? Why do I feel that my pastoral leadership is pushing me or coming at me? What are you trying to do with me? It's working for my good. You hear Let's lift up our hands. We're going to pray. And we just want to just say, God, we're not going to ask you for anything. Let's just say it. And for those that need the Holy Ghost, this is how you get it. You just begin to pray for them. Thank you. you begin to tell them that you love them. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I you. I just want to tell you. I love you more than anything. Sing that song, sis. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight, God, and we just lift up our hands. We just want to say thank you. I appreciate all that you have done for me. I appreciate all that you've done for your people. Father, I am grateful and I show my gratitude to you. I just said, I bless you, Jesus. I bless you, God. You've been so good to me. I just want to thank you. Thank you for watching over me. Thank you for blessing us, Lord God, with life, live, faculties, oh God. Thank you for the true word of God. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for washing away our sins in the waters of baptism. Thank you for filling us with the Holy Ghost. Thank you for drawing us and looking straight in our lives to this moment. Thank you, Lord God, for the rebuke for the correction. Thank you, Lord God, for the reproof. Thank you, Jesus, for the chastisement. Thank you for the trial and the test that has come to allow me to know, God, that you're great and greatly to be praised. Thank you for the revelation. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for long suffering. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for sitting with me. Thank you, God, for being a father when I didn't have one. Thank you, Lord God, for your provision. Thank you, Jesus. For many God have passed away, but I'm still here. And it's by the grace of God. Father, our hands are lifted. 